On Wednesday, an interview between the Duke of Sussex, 37, and the Today's Show anchor Hoda Kotb aired in the U.S. The pair sat down for a chat about life after leaving the firm in the Netherlands, where Harry is attending the Invictus Games. Harry spoke candidly about a number of things including the sporting event which is finally taking place after being postponed twice due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Duke also revealed details about a surprise face-to-face -face meeting he and his wife Meghan Markle, 40, had with the Queen prior to arriving in The Hague. Harry said he and his grandmother shared a special relationship and talk about things that she can't talk about with anybody else. He also described Her Majesty as being in great form during the visit which marked the first time the Sussexes have returned to the UK together since quitting royal duties. He added, She's always got a great sense of humor with me and I'm just making sure she's protected and got the right people around her. His statements were widely criticized as people questioned the meaning of Harry's words and from whom the monarch needed protection. And now, a royal source has claimed the Queen has been left wary after the chat. The source told, a wariness has crept in in recent times, just as it did with Princess Diana. While another source hit back at the suggestion Harry is the favorite of the Queen's eight grandchildren. The source claims that Harry mythologized his relationship with her during the interview. The source said, no longer content to claim a special status with his mother, he now seems to be mythologizing his relationship with his grandmother. Would she recognize this description? I very much doubt it. Elsewhere during the interview, Harry snubbed the monarch by revealing he doesn't know if he'll make it back to the UK for her Platinum Jubilee celebrations. While nodding to his ongoing security issues as his reason, Harry said he was trying to make it possible so that I can get my kids to meet her. Since moving to Meghan's home state of California, after quitting their roles as senior royals, Harry and Meghan have not reunited in the UK with their children in tow. This means the Queen is unlikely to have seen the couple's eldest child Archie, now two, since the family moved stateside. It also means the monarch has yet to have the chance to meet her namesake, the younger of Meghan and Harry's children Lilibet who was born last June. The youngster's nickname derives from the Queen's nickname and it is understood that the pair have yet to meet face to face. During the interview, Harry also admitted that the UK no longer feels like his home and instead commented on how settled he and Meghan were in the US. He said, home for me now, for the time being, is in the United States, and it feels that way as well. After stepping back from the firm, he and Meghan initially settled in Canada before purchasing a property in Montecito where they now reside. The Duke added that his family had been welcomed with open arms and that they were fortunate enough to have a great community around them in Santa Barbara. Asked pointedly by Hoda Kotb if you feel like that's home more for you, Harry nodded and agreed with her statement. In other news, royal author Tina Brown claimed in her latest book The Palace Papers the Duke of Sussex and the Prince of Wales have had a difficult relationship in the past. She reported one disgruntled episode between father and son taking place prior to Prince Harry's 30th birthday when Prince Charles offered to get him a present. Miss Brown claimed the heir to the throne asked his son whether he wanted another dinner jacket, to which Harry agreed. Reporting a source, Miss Brown wrote, So the man from Seville Row came to measure him and when the suit arrived, one arm was shorter than the other and one leg shorter than the other, so it was, returned in a box, which seemed kind of analogous to their whole relationship. The Duke of Sussex Ms. Brown also said, was often confrontational years before he met his wife Meghan Markle. The author wrote, when he wasn't venting about William, he was pouring out resentments about Charles.